Hi, I'm Brian Pause with the Yale University Porvoo Center for Teaching and Learning. And today, I will explain how to enable Zoom in your Canvas course and how to schedule a meeting. Let's begin our tutorial. First, within your Canvas course, in the left-hand course navigation, we'll want to go to Settings. Once in Settings, you'll see a series of tabs across the top, and we'll want to go to the tab that says Navigation. Once in the Navigation tab, we see lists uh, divided into two sections, the top being tools that are enabled in our course, and the bottom being tools that are disabled in our course. Zoom is not a tool that is enabled by default in Canvas courses, so we'll need to enable it here. We'll see at the bottom of the list of disabled tools, entries for Zoom and Zoom HIPAA. Some users at Yale um, are required to have HIPAA compliant Zoom accounts um, because they may be in the School of Medicine um, or the School of Nursing or for other reasons need a HIPAA compliant Zoom account. If you're unsure of which type of account you have, it's totally fine to enable both these tools. So you can just click a tool and drag it up to the upper Enable Tools area. And we'll enable both instances here so we can see which one we need. It's very important once you bring the tools to the Enable Tools section to click Save at the bottom of the page. Once we click Save, we see that both tools now appear in our course navigation. I would like to demonstrate what it looks like when you select the incorrect tool. So I know I don't have a HIPAA compliant Zoom account. So when I click on Zoom HIPAA, I'm just given a notice that my email address does not exist on this account, which is what I would expect to see here. But when I click on the regular Zoom, I'm brought to a page where I can start scheduling a new meeting. Once we've established which tool we'll be using, we can again return to settings, navigation, and drag the tool we're not using into the disable tool section. And again, remembering to click save. Now the zoom tool is enabled and view viewable to both you and students in the course. So to begin scheduling, we'll return to the zoom tool and we'll select the Schedule a New Meeting button. So this brings us to the page where we can start entering in the information for our meeting. We'll see that the topic has automatically imported the name of our course. We can enter an optional description, and then we can select the date and time for our session. If you're scheduling a one-off session, you can select the date the start time, and the duration. And I will note that this duration neither prevents you from joining the meeting early, nor closes the meeting when the duration has been reached. This only affects how it appears on both your and your student's Canvas calendar. If you're scheduling a series of meetings, you can click Recurring Meeting, and then we see options for setting the recurrence. Our original when date now becomes when the recurrence begins. And we can select whether we want this to recur every day or every week. Changing it to weekly updates this text to let us know what we'll be scheduling. You can then choose which days of the week you would like to schedule the session on. And then you can choose an end date. Next, we'll move to video. Um, and we'll. Next, we see an option for registration. And we do recommend leaving this unchecked um, just so students are easily able to join your session. Next, we see a section for video for both host and participant. And this is only setting the initial state of the video. So if you'd like your video to be off when you join the meeting, you can leave yours off. But if you'd like students' video to be on when they join the meeting, you can say 
participant video on. Both you and your participants do have the ability to turn your video on and off once you're in the meeting. This is only setting the initial state for the video. Next, we see an entry for audio. And we see both telephone, computer audio, and both. And both will be selected by default. You can join into a meeting for your audio portion using either your computer devices, um, maybe webcam audio or a built-in microphone, or you can dial in via telephone. So we do recommend leaving this on both just to give everyone the most options for connecting audio into the meeting. Next, we see a series of meeting options. This is where you can say whether you want to require a meeting password. And the next option is enable join before host. Enable join before host makes it so students will be able to join your course session before you as the host join. So it may be a good idea to leave this checked just to let students join into the session uh, before you as the host join so they can make sure their microphone and camera settings are correct and maybe chat with each other. Next, we see mute participants upon entry. And this, similar to the video settings, is just saying whether or not you want your participants' microphones to be muted when they join the session. Again, they can unmute their microphones if they'd like once in the session. But if you have a particularly large class, it may be useful to just encourage people to keep their microphones muted until they'd like to speak. The waiting room feature, which we have an additional video resource on, is a feature that sorts people into a virtual waiting room when they join your session, which then requires you to let them in manually to the meeting. Next, we see the options to record the meeting automatically. And when you check this off, it means your meeting will record automatically when you join the session as the host. So if you're planning on recording all of your sessions, it may be a good idea to check this off so you don't have to remember to start recording each session once you're in the meeting. We do see options to record on your local computer or in the cloud. We do recommend rec recording to your local computer if at all possible, um, and then uploading to the media library section. And we have another video resource on that as well. If it is necessary to record into the cloud, we do recommend that you then download that file and again, upload to the media library. The last entry we see here is for, for alternative hosts. And this is where you can set people uh, to be co-hosts for your meeting for each session automatically. And you can just enter in users by email address. Um, it is necessary for them to have created an account on Yale's Zoom account by going to yale.zoom.us uh, before you're able to add them as an alternative host. Once we have our meeting settings how we'd like them, we can select Save. This brings you to the summary page for your meeting. And this is where you can find the meeting URL and the invitation if you need to send to guest speakers or other users who can otherwise not access your Canvas course. Now, refreshing the Zoom section by clicking on Zoom again in the course navigation we see our list of sessions here. And from here, we can start whatever the next upcoming session is. Students will also see a list of the sessions and a button that says join. Thank you for watching and listening. The Porvoo Center has developed a library of digital recordings and resources, so we encourage you to search for other helpful information on our website.